In Greenport, Long Island, a community hub has fostered learning and growth for over a century. That's one of our favorite things to get the new books. You know, oh, something new, oh, you know, the <laughs> librarians really get tickled when they get their new book orders because they know it's a, no, a new opportunity to make a connection. My name is Brian Mealy. I'm the library clerk here at Floyd Memorial Library. These are our TV series. This is the oldest part of the library, built in 1917. We have a lot of our library events in the backyard. All of our librarians have remote programs through Zoom, but as a clerk that works the front desk, the frontline staff, our joy is when people have started to come back into the library, we can share, you know, what they've been going through. And a lot of our folks, they're the only ones in their house. So the library really is a social and an emotional touchstone. How do you describe Greenport? Greenport has one of the richest local histories of all the villages. There's a strong whaling history where the whaling ships would come into Greenport Harbor. And it's always nice to understand our history so we can go forward on a new path. And so much of that history is kept here and this library has been through it all. And I don't know if you noticed when you came in, we're right in the middle of the community. So we're not on some main drag that has nothing else beside it. To me, that's special, that it's almost like we're, you know, a house in the community and we're part of the family. <laughs> this is the local history room. And my mom, a local historian, Dorothy Mealy, wrote these books about local African-American history. And at the time that she wrote them, a lot of people would say, there's no such thing as African-American history. My mom was so determined, and I think I have that determination from her. You want to make sure that you do the best because you got the opportunity. So I always think about that, like trying to do my best, even when times are tough, even when you're tired, even when there's a frustration, you don't take it out on the person that's on the other side of the desk. So we always try to pass on some kindness. Our longtime traditions is when a child is five years old, they receive their library card. So just seeing the joy and it's like a passport to a new adventure. And you know, that reminds us why we're doing everything that we're doing because not only is literacy important, but unlocking adventures for our young people is so important. And you know, it makes me emotional to you know think about it, but. You know, a lot of the kids when I first started, they're grown ups and they have their own kids. So I've been here about 11 years and just to see the generations, you know, be successful and you feel like you had a part in that success. What to you makes Floyd Memorial Library so special? You know, there's some people that have economic challenges. There's some people who don't have that. There's some people who are going back to school. There's some people that they, they're very intelligent, but they don't think they are and you have to unlock their self-confidence and just by talking with them, you can say, well, wow, I noticed that you really do this. No, I don't. And then like think about, oh, wow, nobody ever really took the time to find out what I'm good at. Pulling the veil of ignorance off in terms of people seeking knowledge. That's a sacred calling, you know, and it happens at every public library in the country. What do you hope for the future of this library and for public libraries in general? I know everybody's dealing with a lot of things in their personal life and, our, and nationally, there's a lot of issues that are going back and forth, but it's, it really feels like this is a haven where you can be hopeful through a story or through a shared experience. I'm very, very hopeful for the future of Floyd, the future of Greenport, you know, our whole society is always hope no matter what's going on.